Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and we're talking about masking and specifically I'm sharing a bunch of tips to help you get the most out of it so you can have the best impact on your photos. Without further ado, let's hit it my friends. I've got a photo here that started like that. I did some basic stuff in raw develop and remove spots. I'm ready to jump into it. And for me, masking is a critical step after doing some of the basic stuff that I might would normally do with a develop raw and possibly super contrast and masking is all about control and so what i want to do is control my edits and put them into specific parts of the photo so i'm going to start with structure ai and you know i want to amp up the the drama let's call it in this photo so i'm going to go pretty high on structure ai and the thing is i kind of like the way that looks in the foreground but it's a little too much in the sky i actually like the structure in the sky but it's a little bit overdone and i want to be careful that i don't want to create a like an over the top kind of HDR kind of crazy edit. So maybe I'll pull this down a little bit. Maybe I'll say 75, but I'm gonna put it in the foreground only. That's where masking comes in. And in this case, I'm gonna use a linear gradient. And so you click and drag and you go like this. And basically what you do is you create a straight line or um, yeah, it's straight. It just may not be level. You can tilt it with this. Uh, and you know that's pretty common but one of the things I want to talk about with linear gradients and this also is the same with radial gradients and that is this area here this is what I call the gradient zone where you're fading from hundred percent of your edit below that line it starts fading from the bottom line to the middle line and reducing from the middle to the top line it goes to zero and then from the top line and up it is zero. And so what I want to talk about here is adjusting this gradient zone because if you come in really tight, you end up with a really abrupt transition. And so tip number one is really just focus on number one, kind of get that where you want it to be and then smooth that transition, make it kind of gradual. The further you drag this out, the more gradual it is. Whereas if you make it really tight like that, you're going to have a really solid line. And I think it looks better when you have a bit of a gradient zone. So experiment with that in your photos. That's the first thing I wanted to talk about. In this case, I'm going to do a gradient about like that, but I'm going to tilt this a little bit. So it's a straight line. It's just not a level line. And what I want to do is come up here because I want to get some of this into those mountains because I want to add structure to those as well. So let's say I have something like that. And now I've got my linear gradient in place. And if you look at the before and the after, I think that looks pretty good. And then here's tip number two. After you're done with a mask, you can go get the brush to add to or subtract from it. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and go in and I'm just going to paint with my brush into these mountains because I want to go ahead and include that in this high structure uh, adjustment that I'm making right now. So I'm just going to come in and do that and let's pretend that I painted it really good which I didn't uh, but the point was tip number two is you can come in with a brush to add to or subtract from other masks that you've done mask AI radial gradient or linear gradient so now I've got my mask everywhere I want it to be with structure AI so before and after don't forget this is kind of a sub tip I think an obvious one but if you go into mask actions and click on show you can see that and I think that looks great. Don't forget, you can take advantage of all the tools down here, including invert and copy. And we're gonna do a little bit of that here in a moment. But if you look at the before and the after, I've used a linear gradient plus a brush to get the adjustment here specifically where I wanted it to be. And I'm gonna make that about a 70. Maybe it's a little high, but bottom line is masking is your friend and helps you get things where you want them to be in your photo. Okay, now what I want to do is get Structure AI again because I said I liked it in the sky. I just didn't like it at the same level or amount as I did in the mountains and the reflection. So let's maybe put this into the 40s, mid 40s. Looks pretty good in the sky now. It's currently applying to the entire photo because I haven't done any masking yet. So the bottom of the photo that I already added structure to is now getting hit twice. We don't want that. We want to isolate it just in the sky. That's where it's great to click on masking and then use mask AI so we can isolate that sky for you and you can choose that as your basic mask to get started with. So I click on mask AI. It goes through, figures things out for me. And then I uh, can click on sky and it'll isolate that sky for me. And generally speaking, I think it does a really good job. I think it's picked out that sky pretty nicely. But I want to point out, if you look around these edges, you can see there's a little bit of a section that it's missed. It's almost like a halo, for lack of a better word. 
And so this is the next tip, and that is I like to come with it, come in with a brush. And what I'll do is normally drop the opacity to about 50, shrink my mouse or cursor a little bit, and then I'll just come in and paint along those edges. So all that I'm doing is basically blending where the mask stops with mask AI right along that ridge line, and I'm blending it in by adding a brush. So it's kind of like what I did on the linear gradient where I added the brush to it, but this time I'm doing it at a reduced opacity so that I can basically just kind of fade or kind of use like that gradient effect, but just along the edge so that I can fade that into what I'm doing here along the sky. So if you're making light or color adjustments and you've isolated a sky like that, but it's not fully touching those edges, use a brush at a lower opacity, which is basically what a gradient is, and just paint along those edges and it will help you add or blend that mass together better so that it doesn't stick out when you make your edits. And so now if you look at my mask, I'll click show, you can see it fades along those edges and fades into the mountain, which is totally fine with structure AI because I'm going positive structure and I've already got some positive structure there, but now I've got a little bit better blend because I was able to come in and blend along those edges with a brush mask. And the next thing I wanna do is actually use that mask again. So this is something I do all the time and that is copy and paste a mask. You just go into a mask that you've built. This is the one for the sky. I'm gonna go ahead and click copy. And then I'm gonna come over here to my color harmony tool and I'm gonna click on masking and I'm gonna click on the actions and I'm gonna click paste. And all that's gonna do is copy the mask from one tool into another tool. I use that all the time. You can see I've now got my same mask for the sky pasted into the color harmony tool. And I'm gonna come in here and I just wanna bump up the intensity of some of the color here in the sky. And so I'm gonna do a little warmth and a little uh, split color warmth and that sort of thing. Actually, I'm gonna go cooler on that and warmer on that. Slight bit of bump in brilliance and warmth. And if you look at the before and the after, you can see impacting the sky, nice little color bump there without overdoing it in the foreground because I didn't do anything in the foreground because it's masked into the sky. So I think that looks pretty nice. There it is one more time before and after in the sky. Now, while I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and get my mask from my foreground, click on masking. And if you're ever confused, I wish that they would allow us to name these. Maybe in the future we'll be able to, but you can always click on show to make sure you're getting the right one. I am, so I'm gonna close show and I'm gonna click copy and I'm gonna go back to color harmony and I'm gonna click paste again. So mask actions paste. Again, you can click show just to make sure you have the right one. I do, I've got everything I need there. So now I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna do something similar here, but I just didn't wanna use the same numbers. So I'm gonna come in here and cool this off. I think that looks kind of good to uh, basically accentuate the difference between the, the blue and the gold. I'm accentuating both colors. They complement each other so well. But the other thing I wanna do is the orangey kind of yellow here, I don't really like. So I'm actually, I feel like it has a little bit of a green tint, and that's why I did these separately, not just to have different amounts, but also to slightly differ my edit in terms of the tools that I use. So I'm gonna come into the magenta green on color balance. I'm gonna go slightly left, and basically that just gets uh, the colors away from green. So in this case, I'm taking the highlights, which are kinda in the mountain, and moving them away from the green, more toward the magenta. I don't wanna go too far because it'll look crazy, but if I just pull them away a little bit, it just gives me a little bit more of that uh, richer warm color and less of the, kind of that green color. So I'm gonna do something about like that. It's pretty minor, but copying and pasting that mask from earlier where you structure AI with a linear gradient plus a brush in the mountains and the reflection allowed me to isolate that area. And there you go, you can see now a little bit greener looking and now a little bit richer gold looking. Another trick I love to use in this case, I'm gonna bump up some of the details, uh, both medium, large, uh, and small as well. I'm gonna get all three of those just to make it a bit more visible for you. But this is gonna be a brush mask and I'm gonna come in with my brush and I'm gonna paint this into the mountains. And I love to do, uh, you know, it's a little bit of detail enhancement, but the thing is sometimes it's hard to get a straight line. So this trick is great for getting a straight line with a mask. Um, once I get where I want to be, I'm still holding down my brush, but I'm gonna let go. And then when I move over, I'm gonna move over without touching the mouse. 
uh, in terms of holding that mask button down. But I'm going to click over uh, on shift key and then I'm going to click once here and boom, it just builds a straight line for me. And that allows me to just get that perfectly straight line along that edge where the reflection begins. And that way I know that I won't bleed all the detail that I'm adding into that part of the reflection. And then I can continue to use the brush to just paint it in over here where I do want it. And now that I've done that, I'm actually going to pull the amount down. I'm going to reset small to zero. It's just a little too much. But this masking tip using the one click with your mouse and then let go, hold down the shift key and then click a second time with your mouse wherever it is that you want that straight line to end that creates a straight line for you and helps you get exactly what you want. So it's great for architecture, for example, or any kind of situation where you have a straight line. I use that trick all the time. Okay, the next masking tip I'm going to use is with uh, Accent AI, and I'm going to give it a bump. Let's, you know, 25, 30, something about like that. But in this case, I'm going to go in masking, and I'm going to go to radial gradient. And I'm just going to start right here in about the center. But, of course, I want to invert that. And, you know, once again, we've got a radial, uh, or excuse me, kind of a gradient zone. And that gradient zone is this area between these two uh, kind of oval circle shapes, right? So from that inner one to the outer one, that's a gradient zone which you can uh, adjust uh, in order to kind of feather that mask and smooth that transition. But what I wanted to point out here, a tip is sometimes you want this area to go kind of far, but what happens is if you pull this in too tight, you're going to have a really abrupt transition. So you can have a wide transition zone and you can still expand that inner circle and it's actually okay for your outer circle to bleed off of the page. And it's okay. It's, it's going to look just fine. And it works that way. So you can actually, if you need to, perhaps you want to have this mask be more like that. You can move it around. And if your radial mask goes off the page, it totally doesn't matter. You can just situate it uh, and get it set however you need it to be set so that you can impact the photo accordingly. There it is before, and there it is now. Adds a nice little pop to that area. And in order to achieve that and isolate that area just right, I had to move my radial gradient to be partly off the screen, but you're totally allowed to do that. And the last little masking tip that I have here, in this case, I'm going to go into landscape, get golden hour. I'm going to go to about 25. And the thing is, is like if I pull it down to about 7 or 10 or 12 or something like that, it's not quite enough. And it's kind of impacting, well, not kind of, it is impacting the uh, like the color of the clouds as I start to drag this higher and higher because, of course, there's gold in those clouds. And so this is something I like to do, which is basically just get a brush mask, leave the, uh, the adjustment. Uh, I'm going to go at about 20, but it's a little too intense here in the mountain, and I don't want it to impact the sky. So I'm going to get a brush mask, and here I'm just going to use a lower strength. I'm going to do about a 60 or so on opacity and just paint that in where I want it to go in order to get a little bit of that intensity without all of it and I'm using the masking brush at a lower opacity to achieve that. So I get it applied exactly where I want it to go but I don't get the full effect because I have a lower opacity or a lower strength. So it's a, a little bit of pop of that 20 golden hour but I'm getting 60% of that 20. So if you look at it before and after, it's just a little subtle pop, which I find I like to mask that in at a lower opacity without trying to figure out, okay, what's the exact saturation amount, amount that I need? If I find something that I kind of like, but it's just a little bit too much, use the opacity to come in, reduce that strength. Well, I say strength uh, or opacity. Those ter terms are interchangeable here. But just reduce the strength, come in and paint it in. And then, you know, again, you can feel free to adjust that intensity to your liking. But I kind of liked it at 20 with the 60% strength. Gives a nice little pop to really help uh, bring that mountain and that part of that reflection up. And that gives me exactly the look that I was going for. So those are all my masking tips that I think will help you really get great control over your photos and nice, beautiful masks every time. If you look at the before, started like that. If you look at it now, quite the uh, quite the change. And if you do a sliding before and after, you can see you really get a massive, massive difference in the photo. That's a power of masking. And I hope these tips helps uh, help you quite a bit, my friends. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Let YouTube know that you enjoyed it. And then check out that video for more stuff that I think you're going to find interesting. Thanks for watching, my friends. I'll be back soon. You guys take care. And until then, 
Adios.